In today's video we're going to be talking about active transport. So we've made some videos previously on diffusion and facilitated diffusion and this video today is going to be on active transport which is a little bit different. So active transport involves transporting substances like molecules and ions against their concentration gradient. So we've mentioned previously that diffusion the molecules move from a high concentration to a low concentration and that process doesn't require any energy but active transport on the other hand is where the substances go from a low concentration to a higher concentration and that's against their concentration gradient and the way this works is using energy so this process is active it's not passive it's an active process which requires energy so there's two types of active transport and I'll be talking about the first type in this video. This is primary active transport. And the second one is secondary active transport. But primary active transport, I'm going to use this example of the sodium potassium pump which is present in almost all animal cells. It's very very common. Um, it's not only just here to transport and maintain this iron concentration but it also helps to facilitate uh, action potentials for nerve impulses as well but we'll make a separate video on that uh, so when we're talking about active transport using this example we have this pump here which is a protein it's a globular protein which is embedded and it's stuck inside the cell membrane so we have a low concentration of sodium inside the cell and a high concentration outside the cell but we also have a low concentration of potassium outside the cell and a high potassium concentration inside the cell. The way this active transport mechanism works is we have three sodium ions because this pump transports three sodium for two potassium. So three sodium ions come along and they bind onto this pump. The inside of this pump attracts three sodium ions to bind because of its structure it's almost like a magnet so it attracts the sodium ions here. We have one molecule of ATP which provide the energy for this so the molecule of ATP comes along and it gives off one of its phosphate groups which bind onto this protein or this pump. This binding of the phosphate causes the pump to change its shape and it causes the sodium ions which were here to be released outside of the cell. So now we have this new shape of the pump and now the sodium ions have been released. This new shape attracts about two potassium ions to come inside. And then the phosphate ion is released. The phosphate ion is released because it was stuck and it caused it to change the shape. The phosphate ion is released and the pump returns back to its original position. So even though that sounds very, very confusing, all that's happened is three sodium ions have gone in this pump and ATP has made the pump change its shape and then the, and then the three sodium ions were released outside of the cell. And to compensate, two potassium ions have gone into the pump and it's been released inside the cell. And the reason this is important is because in both cases, the sodium and the potassium have gone against their concentration gradient and it's basically due to the assistance of this pump mechanism or this protein and through energy which has allowed it to change its shape so that the movement can occur. The reason why these processes are very important, active transport, is it's very important for transmitting impulses. Uh, it's re also really important in the kidneys as well to help save vital um, ions which are being released through urine. So this is my video on primary active transport. The next one will be on secondary active transport and I'll make one more comparing them, comparing primary and secondary active transport together in one video.